All right, Alex, two, let's keep it going. Chapter five, today's lesson is 5.3, where we are solving polynomial. Ooh, that's a pretty cool color. Uh, solving polynomial equations with our objectives being to solve polynomial equations by factoring, by graphing. Remember, whenever we do it by graphing, then that means we're going to be able to use that sweet calculator, which you guys are getting very good at. Okay, but we're also going to have to be able to do it by handling these guys uh, by factoring also. Okay, so let's take a look at this. All right, so let's say we have this equation right here. Okay, and it says to find the real or imaginary solutions for this polynomial equation. Now, this one here, it says to use by factor. So what does that mean? Well, that means on the SAT, this would be a non-calculator question. Okay, and there could be real or imaginary solutions. So let's take a look at this. So whenever we do this by hand and by factors, the first thing we want to do is we want to get a zero on the other side. So we're going to subtract that 3x. Okay, and I've got a zero on that side right there. Now, if you notice, we have a trinomial. That's actually a cubic trinomial, remember. And if you look at all three of those guys, there's one thing in that's in common with all three of those, and that is an x. So I'm first going to take out an x. Now, when I take out an x, what you notice, remember, whenever you factor, it's like division. So it's going to divide out an x out of all of those guys, still equal to a zero, so it's still an equation. And it means we're going to be finding the zeros. That's how we get our solutions. Okay, but if you notice, there's a trinomial there. And whenever we have a trinomial there, we're going to hope. And remember, I'm sorry, whenever we have a quadratic trinomial there, we're always going to hope that, hey, maybe it's a super duper fast one, but this one isn't. Why? Because of that two right there. So we're going to still see if we can maybe factor this. After all, it says to do it by factors. And so remember, what we do is we do two times three, the first times the last, which is negative six, actually two times negative three, and the middle is negative five. And there actually does, something does work there. Now, a lot of students will think it should be a negative two and a negative three. Why? Because a negative two and negative three do give me negative five when I combine them. However, when you multiply a negative two by a negative three, you get a positive six. So that does not work for me there. But you know what's awesome is there's another way to get a six, and that is with a six and maybe a negative one. And if I multiply those two, I get a negative six. But this time when I combine, I get a positive five, but it's a number we want but not the sign we want. So what do we do? Flip-flop those two guys, and we're done. So Now, the only bad thing about this problem is that I cannot do it the super-duper fast way. So what does that mean? That means I bring down the first guy, I bring down the last guy, and then I put these guys in the middle, right? Another way to get that guy right there. And then it's still equal to zero. But remember, since this wasn't the super-duper fast way, I've got to go a little bit further which means I group and I group with a plus sign in between them. Now, what's common between these two guys? A 2 and an x, right? And if I factor that out, I get an x minus a 3, and then we carry that plus sign. Uh, ooh, nothing's in common. If nothing's in common, and there's always a g in common, right? There's always a 1 in common. So we take out a 1, and if I divide those by a 1, I get the same thing back. Okay, and the cool thing about that is splingy spling, sweetie sweets, I get the same exact thing in parentheses. So what does that mean? That means I write that guy down in the first parentheses, gone, gone, and what's left? A 2x and a plus 1 goes in the other parentheses. Now it says to solve these, so darn it, I've kind of ran out of space, but I have to do my spling splings. So we write x equals 0, that's an answer. We write x minus 3 is 0, which means x equals 3. Answer number 2. And then my last answer would be 2x plus 1 equals 0, which I'm going to have to subtract a 1 and divide by a 2. So guess what? I get three answers. One of them is negative 1 half, one of them is tree, and one of them is 0. And guess what? Since my highest guy was x to the third, that tree means you're going to get tree answers. Okay, let's go ahead and keep on doing some of these guys. Practice makes perfect with these. These can be a kind of tough and kind of rough. So let's make sure we work on them together. Ooh, some people are going to say, Mr. T, that's a fuck. Does that mean I'm going to get four answers? It does. But first thing we're going to do is we're going to rewrite this guy because I got to get rid of that guy. So I'm going to subtract it and write. I always want to put them in order in descending order. So four, three, two. All right, we're going to set it equal to zero because we're going to have a zero on that side. So once again, I'm going to find my solutions. 
How do I find my solutions? Well, I've got to get factors. Okay, that's a trinomial, which maybe I factor that. But first, we always take out GC, GC, right? GC, Fs, Fs. Okay, um, and if you notice, all of those have a three that's common, and all of them have two Xs. So that's what I'm going to factor. I remember factors, division, so 3x to the fourth divided by 3x squared would just be an x squared, which is awesome. That's an Ichi out in front. Sweet. I can do it the fast way. If we divide the second guy, that'd be a negative 2x. And if I divide the last guy, that would be a plus 4, right, which is equal to 0. Oh, snap. It looks like it's a super duper fast one, but since I'm so good, I know what's going to happen. Let's check it. All right, so we're going to go a little side work. Let's do super duper fast. One times four is four and negative two and oh, snap, nothing works. <sighs> if nothing works, that means I go right to the answer. Okay, let's solve this guy. Divide by three, square root both sides, x equals plus or minus the square root of zero. What's the square root of zero? Zero. So I get two answers, positive zero and negative zero, but it's really not two answers. But it kind of is two answers. Okay, but they end up being the same answer. And if they're the same answer, if it was graphically, you would bounce, right? It would bounce right there, if you remember from our previous lessons. Now, what do I do in this situation since it's not factorable? Quadratic, right? I got a quadratic formula, that bad boy, which means A is 1, B is negative 2, and C is 4. Remember, whenever we do the quadratic formula, we write down our quadratic formula and we always find the discriminant first. So it'd be negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4SC all over 2A. So remember, this is what we did when we did the quadratic. We did side work and we did B squared, which would be negative 2 squared minus 4 times A times C. And then that would be negative 2 squared would be 4. Okay, now I do my multiplication one at a time. 4 minus 4 times 1 is 4. 4 times 4 is 16. And that gives me a negative 12. So my discriminant is a negative 12, which usually would mean, right, that that's no solution. But we learned about complex numbers, so sweet. We can keep on going. So let's keep on going. So we get x equals the opposite of b. The opposite of a negative 2 would be a positive 2, plus or minus. The discriminant was a negative 12. All over 2 times A, which would be 2 times 1. Now, here we go. There's some simplification we could be doing here, right? Because we have a negative and a square root. What do we do when we have a negative and a square root? We bring out the I. Oh, sweet. I can keep on going because 12 can tree 2 times 2 times 3, right? Okay, and what does it mean if you have two 2s and a square root? And that's still all over 2. Whoops, let's go back to our blue. It's still all over 2, but look at this. The top becomes 2 plus or minus. You have two twos right there, so that means the 2 comes out. Still an I over 2, right, because that 3 is going to stay inside. And then guess what? Everything, right? We said if everything has a 2 in it, you can simplify. So believe it or not, oh, my gosh, have I ran out of space. So let me go. I'm going to write my final answer. Class up here. If I can get my eraser to work, I'm going to write my final answer. Remember, technically, I'm supposed to get four answers. So let's see what those four are for. So first off, remember, we did get some answers of x equals plus or minus zero. There's really two there. And then if I bring this guy up here, I get x equals, ooh, ichi, right? One plus or minus 1i square root three, right? Because I share that two with both of those guys, right? Share, 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 right? Divide everything by two, you get ones. So here we go. You get an answer of a plus zero. You get an answer of a minus zero, technically two there, but we would only really write one, okay? And then you get an answer of x equals one plus i square root three, and you get x equals one minus i square root three. Oh my gosh, I hope you could follow that. If you did, you are going to be monies. All right, because that was a rough and tough one. But I technically did get four answers. Very interesting because there was a four up there. All right, let's keep rolling. All right, let's see. Which one could we do here? I think you guys, I think we're okay there, class. All right. Um, all right, so here we go. Let's do this one, solving 
polynomial equations by factoring still, but some more interesting things are going to be happening. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this one. This is kind of a special scenario, scenario. All right, so we get that. Now that is a quadratic, right? That's a quadratic. And there's nothing in common. So this is a special scenario, right? It kind of looks like this is like x squared minus x minus no x, right? But we're like doubling stuff instead. So we're going to, believe it or not, treat this as a quadratic, which means it'd be a super duper fast quadratic, which is even better. So we do 1 times negative 4, which would be negative 4. And then middle is negative 3. What works? Not 2 and a 2, but what about a negative 4 and a 1? And it does. And we can kind of do it super fast, but some people are saying, Mr. T, there's got to be something different because it is a little different. And you guys are right at home. We can do it the super duper fast way, but this is different. Remember, when this was x squared, we put an x and an x. But since it's x to the fourth, how do we get an x to the fourth? An x squared times an x squared. And that's the only difference. And then there ends up being a minus 4 here and a plus 1 here, just like we used to. And then we just get our answers. That's it. That's the only difference, okay? And obviously, I'm going to have to do some more work here because I have to get x by itself which means I would have to square root both sides. And whenever I square root both sides, I better remember that plus or minus. And then you get the square root of four, which is nibon or two. And that gives me two answers. So positive two is an answer, negative two is an answer. All right, let's check this one here. Okay, let's go ahead and subtract that one on both sides. Square root, or square rooty roots. Oh, snap, I get the square root of a negative one. But this is just means it's imaginary. The negative means there's an i, so let's make it imaginary. Oh, and the square root of one is one. Four answers, because it's x to the fourth. Sweet, right? That wasn't too bad, and that was, that was next level right there, class. So you guys are doing awesome so far. And then now it's really just practice makes perfect. And we're going to practice these guys in class. All right, you guys. So here's just a bunch you can look at. We're just going to do a one more word problem here. And then we'll call it a day. All right. All right. Let's look here. Let's look there. We'll practice those in class. All right. 51 word problem. Once again, I'm dealing with a storage box. But they get a little crazy on me here. They tell me that the, the width is one foot longer than the height. The length is one foot longer than the height. The volume is 36 cubic feet. What are the dimensions of the box? So this time they're asking me for the length, the width, and the height. How the heck am I supposed to do this? Well, believe it or not, it's this okay. You first read it very carefully and they're going to tell you nothing about one of those dimensions. Think very quickly which one of the dimensions, the width, the length, or the height. Do they tell you nothing about? The width is one foot longer than the height. The length is four feet longer than the height. Which one are they telling you nothing about? If you said height, you are on top of it. They tell you nothing about height. So the one, whoops, so we're going to let x equal the height. The one that they tell you nothing about that is all what you, always what you let x equals. And then you just reread the sentence. Okay, we are going to let the width be one foot longer than the height. Well, if the height is x, that means the width is x plus 1, right? It's one foot longer. Make sense? Not too bad if you think about it, right? Well, how would I write this? That the length is four feet longer than the height. Well, if you said x plus 4, you are just rolling, 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 right? That's it. And that's all the information I need to get going. All you need to know is from your eighth grade, sixth grade, I think my son did it in third grade, that the volume of a box is length times your width times your height. And then you just fill in everything you know. And guess what? We know what the volume is. What is it, class? 36. What is the length, class? Well, the length is x plus 4. Okay, okay. What's the width class? It's x plus 1. Okay, okay. What is the height class? It is x. Okay, okay. And then guess what? 
man, the calculator takes it over. All right, but this is a little bit different. We're going to use that 36 to our advantage. How am I going to use that 36 to our advantage? I'm going to show you here in a moment. Let's all get out our calculators, all right? We're going to go to y equals, and we're going to type out our function for volume. Now, what was our function for volume? It was x plus 1 times x plus 4 times x, right? Now, what do we want this volume to equal? Okay, well, we want to know what the length, the width, and the height is when the volume is equal to 36. So we're going to put that guy in our y2, 36. Now, how the heck is this going to get me the answer, Mr. T? Well, I'm going to show you it's so cool the way it works out. All right, we usually do zoom six to get us started, but this is not going to help me out in this problem. Why? Because whenever I use two equations like we did right there, okay, like I did in my y equals, when I have something in y1 and something in y2, the answer is where those two intersect. And the blue one is the volume equation, and the red one is 36. Well, if y is 36, there's no way I'm high enough. So all we have to do, class, and you guys all know I don't like my scales on, I have to go, let's go all the way up to 40, right? We got to get all the way up there. And then guess what? The answer to this problem is as easy as finding where do they intersect. Let's see if they do. Come on, red line. Come on. Oh, there it is. Spling. Intersected right there. So, oh, it's new button now. We go second, calc. It's all there. But what do you think I'm going to use? Do I want a min? Do I want a max? No, I want to know where these guys share a point, which is where they intersect. And I go about to where it is. And this time, guess what? You don't have to do a little two times, right? For this one right here, you just have to enter one time. And then it goes from the blue to the red curve. Enter two times. And then you enter again. And it's going to give me the answer. Huh? X is two. And so really, I'm done. So I just got to go back to my problem. And it tells me that this plastic storage box will be maximized when x equals 2. Well, what is that? That is the height, right? Because I labeled things beautifully right there. So class, what is the width? So the height is 2. The width is 2 plus 1, which is 3. Okay, that's the width. And then what is the length? The length is x plus 4, so 2 plus 4, which is 6. So one thing we like to say is that this box is 2 by 3 by 6. And then let's be careful. It's feet. So 2 feet by 3 feet by 6 feet. And if I multiply 2 by 3 by 6, oh, I get 36. There it is. Hopefully that worked out okay. If you're struggling, come see me before class in the AM, and we will take care of it. Aloha, aloha, alohas. I'll see you next video.